exactly you would like to communicate. Thank you very much, Harte. Rajan, did you want to answer question? Yes, uh, according to me, speech is uh, basically a delivering a message on a particular topic or on a particular stand. So for me, speech is uh, delivering a message to an to individual speaker or a public speaker or a, or a large audience. It's all about uh, delivering a particular message and the key takeaway uh, from whole communication. In So that is, that is what for me is delivering a message. Wonderful. Thank you. All as these three people have mentioned is exactly what he just keeps up with this thing. And I don't need to do the session. The session is over. But jokes apart, when two persons are there, rather by in technical terms, you have, of many of you are tech, from a technical back, there are two TCPIP ends. The main thing that you have to do is send the message from this port to this port. For example, you're accessing it, you're sending some message. The data has to travel from here to the end. For example, I'm sending a message to Rajiv by WhatsApp. The message has to go as is without a loss. What I meant has to be passed. Exactly that is what is speech. Whatever I want to convey, whatever my thought process is, I should be able to convey in a proper way to everyone in the room to understand. There's a popular saying, especially in India, that I am responsible for what I said. I'm not responsible for what you understand. But my dear friends, you are fully responsible for what your audience understands because that is why we are in Toastmasters and we are here to learn public speaking. Let's start with some basics to understand what does a prepared speech contains. First of all, what is that we learn out of prepared speech? When you go prepared, or rather, what are the moments that you go prepared? We talked about impromptu speech, where DTM Lakshmi has mentioned the several moments, whether your wife was asking question, your boss is asking question, your child is asking question, or there it may be a situation where you need to answer the spot. But what are the moments that you need to go prepare? You're presenting something, you're writing an email, you're talking to someone, you have to go, you're go prepare. All those moments, right? Your preparation matters. And when you talk, people look whether you come prepared or just talking or bluffing on them. Your preparation will mean that you are serious and you have come with some stats or some data talk, right? For example, you're going for an interview. I'm interviewing you, and I like find you that you are come prepared to ask me the right questions based upon your preparation to know about the company, that would make a lot of difference. Trust me, that would mean that I'm giving you weightage at least 10 to 20 percent more than other people who are being interviewed. That is the power of preparation. Now, how or uh, what do I gain out of going prepared? First thing is effective communication. My communication is effective. I will be able to send the proper message that I actually have in my mind in the way that I'm communicating, whether it's an email, written communication, or the one I'm trying to convey while I'm speaking. Second thing is time management. Unless you respect people's time, they don't respect you. Sometimes there are situations where you need to speak in a limited time. So you must have your communication properly written based upon the time that you're going to talk. For example, the rate of speech that normally we call for us to talk based upon what people can understand is 80 to 100 words per one minute. That is when people can understand you. So you need to write whatever you are writing properly in the time. This is for when you're speaking. The time management is something that you will learn as part of. The third is organization skills. You know how to organize your thought process in a proper way that you can deliver that within a certain time limit, right? Because I'm, I have to deliver in a certain time, I will start organizing in a proper way. And then also I'll be using a proper language with one word that is giving an essence of complete two to three lines sometimes. 
last but not least is confidence. You go prepared, you are confident. If you are not prepared, most of the time you are not confident. Now that we know that what are the benefits of a prepared speech, and we know different areas where we need this, let us look into the structure, a proper structure. What is that? You open it. For example, you are writing an email. You just don't, don't go directly to business. Raghu, do it. Raj, you do it. Come on, do it. I know. At least after the COVID the situation has changed, where you keep asking, how are you doing? Hope you are doing well. In every communication, all of So we open that. Can be anything. Opening is it may be introducing what you're going to talk about. For example, let us say you are in IT organization. You're sending an email. Do you directly send the test results? For example, you are a testing team and you want to run, send the test results. Let us say you are a product manager and you need to send some details to customer. You give an introduction to what you're going to talk about. And then in the body, you will give all that you have to say. And then in the closing, there is an action point or what you have learned. For example, let us say that we are going to talk about what is that we learn in the uh, sending meetings of meeting or something like that. You are giving what is a, that we learn. Or let us say that you are giving test results and you want someone to take action. You're giving the call for action in the similar way when you're talking, you need to ensure that your body has the need and where your opening has something that introduces you to the topic and your closing is where you're giving and call for action. The call for action are something that you want the audience to take an action based upon what you speak is something is part of your content. Now in the talk of the three T's that TTM Lakshmi has already mentioned, in an opening, you're telling them what you're going to tell them. Tell them what you're going to tell. The second one is tell them. The third one is tell them what you already told. So it can be summarized. It can be, you can summarize what your whole three pointers. I even, even, even email, you can talk when you have everything there, you can summarize it. And then also your call for action, what you do is the three T's a part of main prepared speech. Now coming to next part is for opening. What can you have as a part of your opening? What do you think? It can be a salutation, it can be an, just a greeting. It can be a quote, a famous quote that is related to what you are going to talk, related to what you are going to talk. Second thing, audience preparation. You can ask a question. For example, you're going to talk about artificial intelligence. Now you have a topic. Then ask for people, what do they think about artificial intelligence? Do you think artificial intelligence is going to take more jobs? Are people going to unemploy just for artificial intelligence? And then you can go to the topic. The suspense and curiosity, where you can just say something, where it will, it will start thinking, oh my God, what is he going to talk about? What is she going to talk about, right? Then you can have a story or anecdote, again, related to this. You cannot just talk about something that is happening in space and then come to the top. And sure that you're connecting well with that. You can have a rhetorical question. Keep asking some question, the same question that's related to it. For example, I have speech. When I talk about freedom, do we really have freedom? So ask, keep asking people, are we really free? I mean, it depends upon what you want to convey. This should be in line with that. Now, what is something that you should avoid while you are delivering is avoid acknowledging the time that you take. I said, I have come last minute preparation for that. It will discourage people who are listening to you. Don't be dull. Because if you are dull, people will not be with you. So bring that enthusiasm when you're speaking and keep your voice in line with the emotions that you're speaking about. And do not delay the topic. For example, if you're going to talk about your artificial intelligence, do not talk all the history and myths, and then you come to the topic in the last. Now, people want to hear that as soon as you can start. So one to two minutes, and then you need to directly dwell into the topic. So ensure that you are not delaying it too much. Now, what are the other things how you can do in the body? Body is where list on all the points that you want to talk about. For example, you want to talk about artificial intelligence as an example. 
Now, what you want to mention there, for example, with the emerging technologies, secondly, what are the uses, what are the disadvantages, or something like that. List on all the key points. Next them is arrange them in order what, how you want to present it. And third thing is expand them. It's just like you draw something and then start filling with the colors exactly the same with here. You are listing down them and you are expanding them. What you need to remember is a good speech is well written. Means you need to check your email or your draft, your presentation several times before it's effectively presented. Same way with the speech that you are delivering. I have seen public speaker who go prepared several times, they practice it before the mentor, they practice it before different audience, before even going to the championship stage. Stick to share, stick to the topic that you are delivering. Don't go around the bush because people will, you will lose the audience. Complete your draft, write your draft so that tomorrow, if you see any point, it will be easy for you to correct them. If not, if you're just going impromptu, it will be difficult for you to make any changes. Now, one thing that you need to remember, or rather what I say is when I went outside India talking to different kind of audience is my rate of speech. We Asians intend to run around and we speak very fast. People will not be able to catch. There's a moment when one of the ladies in one club, as mentioned, Raghu, I didn't understand whatever you spoke today, which is when I started working on the rate of speech and started developing that. 80 to 100 words per one minute is a rate of speech that you should ensure to have in your speech. Do not run, do not rush. As I said, everyone in the room has to understand, observe your speech to ensure to have your speech adjusted to this. Now, what is your conclusion is when you have to relieve the audience. Now, we all have seen movies, right? When they end with the suspense and then sometimes there are movies which relieve us because they give a proper ending to it. If there's no proper end, we still are stuck there. What really happened? We don't know about it. Same way you have to relieve your audience with the conclusion. Let them see when you achieve a sense of closure. Try to make an impact if you are some, trying to bring an impactful speech there. For example, you're talking about climate. Let them see that let, the impact of it. Try to summarize what you're going to talk or whatever you spoke till then, right? And then repeat, repetition is something that you can see. You can keep asking questions and they can end with that. Ending with the same title that you have for your presentation or speech is something powerful that you can do. Call for action where you can ask your audience to take an action based upon what you spoke so far. This is something that you must do. And what you should not do is memorize your conclusion. Most of the time, if you are memorizing it, sometimes it becomes difficult if you forget lines. You need to end on time. Remember, Respecting people's time is what you need to do in every way, right? Sometimes we see people bragging so much in office meetings, bragging so much in different meetings, but then we get off as soon as they start, four or five minutes, and then we lose them. Even if your audience is losing interest in you, then my dear friend, you have lost the purpose of speaking there. You must ensure that everybody is with you that is how you should make the impact. So please structure everything and, and ensure to end on time and refrain from adding anything in the end. When it comes coming to conclusion, try to just go with the flow. Do not try to add more points because if you're adding more points, then you're confusing the audience. If that is about the conclusion, the next thing is how can you make your content, or rather your speech better, is first thing is craft compelling content. While your delivery is important, your content is the thing. So try to bring your content, which is compelling, but appealing to all the audience that is there. And you must understand your audience. Just do not generalize and go and speak before anyone. You try to understand the statistics of the audience that you're going to talk to, because that is something people face problem with. 
example, initially, when we you know, started talking with our business, I understood that he was not able to understand the technical language he was speaking. And in the end, we had to bring someone who could be interface for both of us. But if that time, if I have understood the sense that I should talk in a simple language for them to understand, and then be a little patient, but to understand what they are trying to convey, it would have been easier for me. This is something that you must understand that you should have content appealing to everyone, same time understand your audience. Third thing is make it universal. What I've seen most of the time, people pick up topics which is limited to the place, location, or maybe sex or something like that, right? You are talking about women, you're talking about anything. Try to make it universal for people, everyone to understand, right? People love the one very understand, they're able to connect with. If you're talking something about an Indian festival, before a larger audience, try to make it universal for them to relate. It is not easy if you're just talking something local. People love humor. Try to add sprinkles of humor in what you are speaking. And then trust me, the audience will be with you, whether it is a serious presentation or whether it is anything that you're speaking about. I still remember my engineering professor who used to come and while we were so dull, just used to give a joke. Uh, then with that joke, he used to get every attention of everyone in that class. And then he used to complete his class in respect for whether we ask him to stop the class or not. Humor makes your presentation much better. So have sprinkles of humor here and there. And trust me, people are with you. Asking rhetorical questions will make your speech better, our presentation better. You keep asking them. And while you're asking a rhetorical questions or any questions, we'll ensure that the audience is with you. If you ask questions, you will understand that they are listening to you because listening is important, right? If you keep asking them questions and you, you will make engagement with the audience and then you can also customize this upon that. One thing I've seen, some people, just because they think hand movements are voice modulation, are just movement hearing and then it's content. No, as your body, else, just let it just be there and try to move as you can move. It doesn't matter because it is your style. My dear friend, do not try to copy because just one confident speaker or one inspiration speaker was talking like this. No, do not force any gestures. Let your body leave. Do not feel tense at that moment, and your hand is just like my mind are moving, let it move freely, and you will do the magic there. Even the vocal variety, do not try to force it just because somebody told you. Let that come naturally, leave that moment, and you will see the beauty when the vocal variety comes up with your emotion, they're in sync with that. Next thing is, at every level, keep improving, keep working on yourself more. This is the quality check criteria. It's based upon international speech contest and Toastmaster. But this is something that I feel applies to everything. Because as they say in Telugu, and I keep saying, everything is eligible to speech. And everything that we speak is a speech. Because Everyone is trying to convey a message that's passing on to a different person, right? These are some things, criteria that you must look into. Speech development, how you are developing your speech in overall that you convey. Effectiveness, how you connect, effect, are you able to effectively pass a message to a group or not? The value, do people see a value in what you convey or it is just that you're just coming and speaking something? Your delivery also matters, how your hand pieces are moving, your voice modulation, and then also the way that your manner is. For example, I'm trying to be rash, and I'm trying to send a proper message that people can understand. Same time, something that Lakshmi has already spoke about, appropriateness. Is audience able to understand? Is my language appropriate for you? 
are how I'm standing, are struggling, using arms and ohms, my people are, don't see a value there. Same thing, correctness. Correctness is the, in the language that I'm using, my grammar should be proper. Ensure that you're using proper grammar, whichever language, because right now it's not just about English, it's about the language, whatever you are speaking in. It matters if you are struggling with the asanoms or whether you're struggling with the language. So if you can implement these things in wherever you are speaking, remember, respect people's stand, same time, you should effectively speak for other person to understand. Next time, never say that I am responsible for what I said, not responsible for what others understand. My dear, you are responsible for everyone in the room to understand what you exactly did with them. With that note, I will conclude my speech and open for questions. Yes, sorry. Yeah, um... Um, I, I got the fundamentals. I was wondering if you could um, take a topic and sort of walk us through the process, not very deeply, but, you know, in terms of the structure, right? Um, if you could quickly take us through a topic and how you would build that speech. Sure. Why don't you give me a topic? Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, Anybody in the room wants to give a topic? Why AI is beneficial for organizations? Why AI is beneficial? Okay. Now, let us say the topic is AI, artificial intelligence. Okay, Rita? Now, artificial intelligence is, I'll start first with a quote, right? Do you think Artificial intelligence will, uh, will ensure that you all are uh, a question, a, a question that will raise a curiosity. Do you all think that you will lose your jobs if artificial intelligence comes to the company or something like that? I'll ask a question that's a compelling question for people to get glued. Okay, what this guy is going to talk about, right? And then I'm raising the curiosity of all the public. And second thing, I'm going to slowly talk about it, slowly going to introduce the topic. Artificial intelligence, my dear friends, is not what we all think of. And then slowly talk about the advantages of it, right? How it is going to help us, is complement what, in what we are doing. For example, it helps in automation. It is whether it is in the voice process that we are doing right now in business or whether it is the what, how we are automating some processes where we can drive a lot of processes where the manual process are done. How it, it is not just removing the jobs, but people are overlooking into what happens. It does not take the job, but it's empty. it complements in what we are doing. It helps in a removal of some error while we are doing it manually, something like that. And then conclude saying that we are getting. Does that make sense? Um, yes, I had a couple of uh, clarifications. Could you again clarify what you mean by the, in the structure I'm seeing the, the first part of the opening says start in the middle of the action and the second part of body says overcome the obstacle. I wasn't clear of what those phrases mean in the context of you know the structure. Okay. Let us say that you're talking about a, a story. Let us say you're telling a story. Okay. You're telling a story. Now, what does our, every story has? Every story has when we introduce the characters. Once upon a time, there's a king, there's a queen, etc. Right? That's the introduction scene. Then it goes and comes to a stage, stage where the, the person, the main character, is in problem. They face a problem. They overcome that problem with something or other, right? That is a part of the, the problem that they're facing and then how they overcome. For example, lion king story. What happens to the cub? The cub is lost somewhere and then it comes and then it faces a lot of issues, a lot of problems everywhere and comes back to the stage as a king. Now you see the point? 
the bot, the main introduction is it, the characters are introduced, the Simba or whatever the lines names are, and then the cub is born, and then slowly we go into the story where it's, the problem is there. And if I, for example, you're talking about atmosphere, right? Atmosphere, you talk about some effects introducing, and then slowly talk about what is being caused by these effects. Let us say today we are we are we don't have proper vegetables. Too much of pollution, or it may be can say that the uh, rains are coming in in different conditions. We are talking about that, and then slowly bringing back again to the conclusion. One thing I would say is, your bosses would not like this point where you just talk about problems, talk about the solution. Same way, your audience will love you if you are giving a problem, cause, and solution. This is a famous technique in proper presentation is where you identify the problem and then talk about what are the causes that is causing the problem and then identify the solution and present it. Everyone in the room will love you and your boss will be the first one to laugh at you. Thank you. Thank you, Raghunath. That really helped me. Thank you. Thank you, Hari. Thank you for that question. You, Raghu, uh... Any more questions, participants? Even any slightest clarifications can be done at this moment. We have two more minutes to go for the next session. If you don't have any questions, Raku, I uh, take... Excuse me. Yeah, please. Others? Yeah. Uh, uh, I was wondering where can we get the slides? That will be provided to you, others. All right, thank you. Slides, this recordings will be provided to you uh, uh, by the respective coordinators. You can connect with your coordinator. You will get the meeting. Linda, you have a question? Yes. I wanted to know more about the uh, the speed that you mentioned. Like, How do we know our speed? And is there a technique to work on the speed? Okay. I think that I will... The technique and their tools that can count that we are going to have one session on Udly Correct. by Coach Master Ronald, who is going to give a session on the last week. But the, for now, what I will say, when you have a presentation to do, have a timeline. I'm going to speak for four to six, five to seven, 10 to 15. And when you have that timeline, what you need to do is have your words count. Word count because if you're you always type, right? Before nobody writes these days. So you, when you have that word count, ensure that this, this is between 80 to 100 per, per minute that you're speaking. This is something that can be understood universally. Does that make sense? Thank you. Rajat, Rajat has a question. Rajat, Rajat, please go ahead, Rajat. Yes, actually, I have a question regarding the, uh, crafting the speech. Whenever I actually I could try to craft the speech, it happens uh, that the time limit is three to four minutes. But uh, when I practice my speech, written speech, it, it always crosses uh, way beyond the three limit, uh, three minute or four minute limit. And I I found I generally found that. Uh, I have written a speech for six to seven minutes and then I have to start condensing my material. So in that moment, I start facing difficult time. So basically, what points I should move. I, I have always feeling that I am always missing the important points. I am removing them and I should mention that so basically in such a situation, how should I basically I decide what points should I mention and what should I what points should I omit from my speech to make it in a uh, time make it a, in a manner so that it covers the time limit. It remains within a time limit. Thank you. Thank you for the question. One thing I would say, if you have seen, for example, let us say I take this, see the reading, blah, 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 and then I keep delivering it without seeing. There's a lot of difference. Here I'm reading and I'm just mentioning. There's a lot of difference between when you read your script and when you deliver it, right? The, the, the timing is a difference. Your delivery marks in this delivery is always, it's always slower than what you, when you read it, first thing. 
Second thing is, I mentioned when you can take about 80 to 100 words per minute, that, that will mention. Third thing is what I observed right now, you're rushing for, you're trying to convey something, but you're rushing, your rate of speed still is something I cannot understand fully, right? Go slow. Whenever you're speaking, go slow. But people to understand. One thing is your mind also, when you're going slow, it also can start thinking and can process what others have said or what you're speaking or what or you can improvise what you're speaking. And fourth point is any time, every time, what you're written, there are always a speech that is written, there are always speech that you want to deliver, there's always a speech that you could have done. That, de that difference will all, always be there, which is why I keep saying that repeat your speech, practice your speech, then you can overcome this problem. It happens with everybody, and we are no exception. Everybody, everybody, I'm saying, everybody. So don't think about it, keep practicing it where it as possible, and then you'll be able to work that. Okay, thank and you, Rajat. Thank you, Rajat. Uh, Raghu, uh, any more questions can be taken offline. Raghu is the mentor for the program and he will be here for all the four sessions. If you have any more questions, even after going through the recordings and the slides, you can reach out to Raghu. He is available 24 into 7. So, in your, with this, we are concluding this session and let me honor the Swedish Toastmaster Raghu for the wonderful education session. It was a quite engaging session and that is evident from the questions we received from the audience. Give him a big round of applause. Thank you very much. You'll stop recording from what you start yes. your recording locally. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let me